Time now for Sewing Perfect with Debbie, exclusively on Hometown TV. Hi, and welcome to Sewing Perfect with Debbie, and I am Debbie Hunter with Sew Perfect Studios, and tonight what we're going to learn how to do is we're going to learn how to make these cute little summer dresses. They're called pillowcase dresses. You can make them virtually any size. I've made tons of the little ones for your little teeny girls, and you can also make adult sizes. So you can have mommy and daughter matching. Isn't that cute? Okay, now these are very simple to make. All you need to do is you need a tape measure, one that'll measure all the way around your body, and that's what you're gonna do. So. What you're going to do is you just take your, your paper tape and you're going to measure around your body where this particular mannequin is 39 inches there. You're going to measure the waist and then you're going to measure the hip. And what you're going to do is you're going to go off of the largest measurement. Okay, so in this case, the 41 is the largest measurement, so that's the measurement I'm going to use to make the little dress with. Now what you do is you write, write down the measurements, and what you're going to do is you're going to add 12 inches to whatever that largest measurement is. That's what gives you this fullness. It gives you a little bit of room to move around so that it's not tight or, you know, you, you want them nice and loose. They're summer dresses. You want them just easy breezy, flowing in the wind, you know, just really nice, comfortable dresses. Now that you've got that measurement, so we've gone off of, I'm actually making this in here for a friend of mine, for her little girl, and her measurement is 43. So I've taken the 43 and I added the 12 inches to it, which equals the 55. So I know I need 55 inches of fabric to go all the way around this little girl. Give her plenty of room to play and run around in and be comfortable. So you take that 55 and you divide it by two because your fabric's gonna be folded in half like my fabric right here. I've already taken it and laid it out and folded it in half. And my half measurement is the 28. So I've already got that laid out. So what I'm gonna do is I have it laid out here. I've got it folded in half. This is my 28 and this is the width of the fabric. Um, another measurement that you're really gonna need is you're gonna need the height of it. In this particular case, this little girl is 40 inches, is how long her mama wants the dress from right up here, right below your shoulders, down to just a little bit past her knees, uh, and it's 40 inches. So to that 40 inches, you gotta keep in mind you need a hem at the bottom, that's two inches, just like with our little bags last time, we added that rolled over hem. We're gonna do the exact same thing with this. So you've got your two inches at the bottom that you wanna to add to the 40, and then you want three inches at the top. Now the three inches for the top is so that you have this nice two inch pocket so you can put pretty much any size ribbon around the neck, plus you have a one inch that you're gonna fold back up under to hide that raw edge, because remember we don't want raw edges showing. Okay, that's what keeps it looking professional and keeps it from unraveling and keeps it really pretty. So we've got that already laid out here. Is the 45 inches is the width of the fabric, so I'm not wasting any fabric. My 28 is here. This is your, what they call the run of the fabric. So this little dress is two yards of fabric okay at like 297 a yard so you're talking six bucks and then the ribbon runs about two dollars so for you know under ten dollars you've made a super cute little dress first thing you're going to do is you're going to press it down and i like pressing this seam in here remember on the bags we always press that bottom seam and that comes in handy when you're laying things out, measuring and stuff like that, so you know 
where that seam is. This is actually going to be our side seam. Okay? So, here we have this. Now, another important thing to remember is or the next step to this is cutting out for the arms. Some people just cut a triangle shape. You know, that's fine if you want to do that. I like doing a round shape because your arm is round. You know, this part of your arm is round. You want it to be round. Now what I did to get a pattern for it, and this is the easiest thing in the world to do, just take a sheet of paper, okay? Just your regular sheet of paper put it right on like in this case I've got a dress mannequin but you can put this on your kid have a razor arm or something like that you just put that on and just do a little drawing right across here so you're going up under her arm and then on up and that's going to give you that curve to whatever you know the size of the little girl is now I've already got my little pattern right here now, this opening here is going to be sewn down. This is our side seam. So on this side seam is where we're going to put our arm. And what I'm doing here is I'm leaving about a half of an inch from where my little pattern is and putting it right up on the top edge because I've already allowed on this I've already allowed that three inches that we're going to fold over to make this here top pocket and then the the fold under I've already allowed that on my little piece of paper so I've got my little pattern here and I'm just going to cut it out just cut that inside part out because this is where your arm is that's your armhole is that right there and you're going to do that on both now on this side there's not a seam okay it's just pressed down so I'm just going to put my pattern right up next to the edge I don't have to leave any kind of seam allowance or anything on this one so I'm just cutting that out okay so you see there's our armholes okay now since we bought a little extra fabric we need a uh, an inner like an interfacing the the piece that's going to go on the inside of this that's what gives you like that professional looking result I'll show you okay see here that's what we just cut out and that's what is going to give you this really pretty edge you don't never want to leave raw edges remember even on the bag we covered the raw edges up with binding uh, some people put binding across there to cover that raw edge i kind of like using just putting a little interface in there so that it just looks more kind of professional done and it's very simple. I just showed you how to make the pattern. Okay, so we're going to take a little bit of our fabric that we've got left over. And we're going to put this here on a fold. Now what I'm going to do so that I'm not wasting any fabric is I'm just folding it over so that I can cut both sides out at the same time. And I'm putting this, this part right here, right on the fold of the fabric where I've got it folded. And I've got one, two, three, four pieces, which will end up as being just one piece when we get our two pieces, one for each end when we get it done. Okay, so... What we're going to do is we're going to fold it over because like I said, you want to kind of conserve your fabric. You don't want to have to buy a big old lot if you don't need it. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just folding this over to where just my pattern 
is where this here other end is. So this is my little fold right here. I'm just going to press it down because you always want your fabric good and pressed nice and flat. Plus, pressing it gives you that little makeshift little seam that you're going to go off of later on. So it's very important. Press it down. Yeah, get your, your good iron. Press it down real good. Use your pins, your nice glass pins. Pin it down and then you can cut it out. And in this case, you're cutting out that whole little L shape. Whereas on the little dress part here, all we cut out was that inside. That inside is the inside right here. Now we're cutting out the outside, and that's just leaving a little extra fat or a little extra paper. You know, I usually do about two inches. Gives you a good, you know, interfacing to it. Uh, and you're just gonna just cut it out. It doesn't. It's not no particular exact science to that. It's just enough fabric to have on the inside. And then you're just going to cut it right on out. And then this is what's going to go on the inside. Right in here. And that's what this right here is, is that inside. Okay. Now you can, if you're, if you were working with like a knit fabric, then I would suggest putting uh, a little bit of a stiffener, a little iron on, you know, fusible web onto it just to kind of stiffen it up a little bit. But with this here particular fabric, you don't really need to do that because it's not going to shift and move around on you. So, okay. Now, what we're going to do is I'm actually going to use my serger, which is another little sewing machine that, if you notice like on your blue jeans, or not your blue jeans, your t-shirts and stuff like that, they have that edge that has a lot of uh, threading and stuff around it. That's done on a serger. Okay, it's like a good stretch stitch. You use it really good for knits, stuff like that. Um, what it's going to do is it's going to finish this outer edge of my facing so that it's not going to ravel. Okay, so let's go on over to the serger. We're going to go ahead and do it now. My serger. Now this is just uh, this is the niftiest machine, and if you're going to do a lot of sewing, I would recommend going ahead and getting one. This way, like I said, we're going to just finish this here edge. It just gives it a more professional look to it. It, um, it covers the raw edge. We could have used this instead of that double fold binding on our bags. We could have just run it through the serger if you wanted to, but I wanted to show y'all you know, an alternative way of doing it, you know, just in case if you didn't have one of these machines. So, all this does is it, it cuts, cuts the fabric and trims, or it cuts the fabric plus it sews the edge all in one step. So I've run, I've run it through the machine, and I don't know if you can see it really good, but you see where it's, it's kind of, uh, it's just finished off the edge, really nice to kind of give it that, like I said, the more professional look, and that's that's what you want. You want people to say, "Where'd you buy that?" And then you turn around and go, "Oh, I made that." So that's one of the good things about having this machine, and they're not too awfully expensive they're they're very affordable you can get them out at walmart or any place like that so i love my serger <laughs> you can see we've got both of our insides the insides to our armholes 
are sewn and ready and I'm just pressing it down a little bit just to just to make it it just makes it easier to work with if it's nice and flat and there's that steam on that iron that's what you want that presses it down really good so now we're ready to take this over to the sewing machine and start putting our little pillowcase dress together so meet me over at the machine all right now we're we're over at the machine and we're ready to start sewing our dress and on the dress itself you've only got this one straight seam that's running right down the side because this here other seam is already connected see where we just folded the fabric so what we're going to do is we are going to fold it so that your front of your fabric is facing the front of your fabric see so your front is on the inside and the inside of your fabric is on the outside. And we're just gonna line it up here and we're gonna do one straight stitch all the way down just like what we did with our little bags a couple weeks ago is the same thing that we're gonna do with this almost. You're just gonna run a straight stitch all the way up the side and I'm gonna line it up at the armhole because it's more important to have the armhole lined up than it is the bottom. And you'll see why when we go to doing the hemming and stuff on the bottom, you'll see why it's more important to have the armhole done. Now, if you remember when we laid out our pattern for this on our fabric, remember we left that little bit of seam allowance and we left a half of an inch so that's what's going to be my seam allowance is the one half inch and that pretty much is the foot of the machine remember we were using the foot as our guide to keep it good and straight and that's what we're going to do with this we take a couple stitches and then we're going to back it up you got to set those stitches in there and then we're just going to go and do one straight stitch all the way down You just keep keep lining up your fabric. Don't stretch it. You don't have to pull it. Let the machine do the pulling for you. All I'm doing is guiding it, keeping it straight. down at the end and I'm going to back it up again setting those stitches this way that doesn't just come out and there we go and that's our side seam now this here doesn't really matter where it's a little stair step because when we go to do our fold just like we did on the bags we're going to do a one inch and then another one inch and nobody's even going to see that so that's a little trick. You don't have to worry about it being messed up there. Now what we're going to do is because you have a raw edge here, and this is where uh, me showing you the, uh, the double fold binding before, you could put that on there. I've seen it just left like this. I don't like it left like that because I don't like it to be raveled like that. So what I'm going to do, since I've already showed you the serger, I'm going to run the surgeon, the sur surgeon, <laughs> the, the surge seam right on down here. And that will finish this here edge, just like these right here. And it'll keep it from unraveling. Plus it puts another stitch in there to kind of hold on to it even more, makes it even more sturdy. So let's go on over to that machine. We're just running that seam. Now, what I'm doing here, though, let me go up a little further. Okay. 
I don't know if you can zoom a lot on this, but this is the stitch that we did on the regular sewing machine. And then this here's the serge stitch. And you see there how it's, I'm, I'm just on the edge of it. And what I'm doing is I'm just finishing that edge. And you can see it's not gonna come unraveled. Even when you wash it and stuff, it's not gonna come apart. It just, it just makes it look, if you notice in the stores and stuff, when you see, you know, clothes, they, a lot of clothes are made with this here kind of stitch to it. Plus it's fast. I like this machine. Press on the gas and it goes. is loud <laughs> okay now we go back to the regular machine right now okay so now since we've done we have finished off that edge there so it's not gonna come unraveled and not gonna look like a mess every time you wash it now what we're gonna do is we are going to put our facings on and this is not as difficult as it looks, okay? You're always gonna put front to front together. See that right there? That's our armhole. We're just gonna press it down. With our trusty little steam iron here. Press it down and we're also pressing that seam that we just made. Just keep in mind there was only one seam on this whole little outfit. Here's our armholes. We're just gonna lay that right down on there. Just line it up. And we're gonna press it down. You always wanna keep everything really good and flat and press. It just makes your life so much easier when you keep it good and pressed down when you're sewing. And then we're gonna pin it that helps even you know i've been sewing for 40 years and i still pin stuff it just keeps everything together i don't have to fight with it and you can see it just takes a minute to kind of pin you know get it all pinned together and we're using the glass beads remember you want the glass ones you don't want the plastic ones Okay, now we're going to put the other side on. Remember this side here, we didn't have to sew because we just folded the fabric over in the very beginning. So there's our other armhole. This section right here is probably the hardest section on the entire, on this entire little dress is this right here. This is the only curved sewing that you're going to be doing on it. It's, but you'll see how simple it is. Okay, then we take it over to the machine. And we're just going to sew on that inside edge. And we're just going to take about, about a half inch or so seam allowance. You know, you don't want to be too close to the edge, but you don't want to be so far in, you know, that you don't have any of this to flip over. So you can see I'm just going to stay right on using my foot right there as my guide. And I'm moving my pins out. You don't want to run over top of your pins. I've seen the needle break running over a top of a pin and if you don't have glasses on, it's not a pretty sight. <laughs> so, and you can see here, when you're going to sew around a curve, if you kind of lay your fabric out to where it's nice and flat, 
and then just move the fabric around as you're sewing it. See how easy that is? And this way you go right around that curve without any problem at all. I'm backing it up. You always want to make sure that you back stitch that. Now let's sew the other one. And then we're backing it back up. Okay. Now, that's our armholes. We've got those in. Now one of the rule of thumbs whenever you're trying to fold anything or you're making anything with a curve to it <laughs> is you want to clip about a half of an inch apart all the way around the curve and see there I get right up next to the seam that I just made but I'm not clipping that seam. You don't want to clip that seam. Be very careful so that you don't clip that seam. But you're just getting right up next to it and you're going around a curve. Anytime you go around a curve, you want to do that. You want to just take it and just clip it. I think they call it easing, easing it or something like that. I don't know what all the proper names to everything is, but I know it makes it easier to flip over and turn and press down when you do that. So that's what you do. It just makes it lay a lot flatter and prettier. So just kind of keep that in mind because later on, one of the other episodes that we've got coming up is showing how to do a placemat and uh, it's got curves to it and it's round and you gotta do that in order to flip it in, inside out. And that's what we're doing here. So here's our armhole and get your trusty iron because every time you do a step you want to press it. And what we're going to do is we're going to press to where your your salvage end, your, the, your edge is going is going to go towards the inside so you just press press your seam open this just doing this here a little bit of pressing right here opening up that seam it's going to make it so much easier for the next step because you've already kind of got half of it done right there now, you're going to fold that. Let's flip it over. It makes it easier to, to see. Okay. So now, you're just going to press this, fold it to the inside, right on that seam that you just made. And then you're going to press it. That's why I said it's good to get you a good iron because if you're going to do some sewing, you're going to need that iron. Seems like you do more ironing than you do sewing when you're sewing. <laughs> it's really kind of funny. It's like I thought I was sewing. No, you're ironing. You iron a lot when you sew. But it just makes it easier and it makes it look nice and crisp. And see, we're just flattening all that back out. And if you notice, this is the inside of the garment is what it is. This is the inside of your little dress. And we're just pressing that down and now we're going to pin it. And I'll show you why. Because we're going to end up sewing down a little bit. And what that's going to, we're going to do a little tack right here. 
and we're going to sew down here and sew down here just down about three inches and I'll show I'll show you when we get to that one of the next steps what why you sew that down just that little bit and you'll see why it's so much easier to sew we see now there's your armhole you see how much nicer that looks got it looks like a nice finished edge right across that now we're going to just press out our other our other one I see have had we not clipped that right there you see what we're doing here when we fold this here over you see how that opens up now had we not clipped that it wouldn't open it would have rolled and that would have really kind of just made a mess right there up under that arm <laughs> and it would have bothered the little girl she'd be constantly picking at it and wouldn't want to wear the dress because it wouldn't lay flat and then you'd be like oh, I ain't never making another one when all you had to do is just clip that little teeny bit there and that makes that's what makes it lay nice and flat like this it's just that little little teeny clipping it's a wonders what just little teeny step will do but if you leave it out you'll have a sad little girl on your hands and we don't want that these are happy little dresses and we want everybody that wears them to be a happy little girl especially when they turn around and say oh my mommy made this and then you'll have all the neighborhood mommies going hey make me one so you'll be a famous woman okay now we're gonna go ahead and just tack that down and so this here this little bit right here we're only going to go down about three inches on that <coughs> and this here we're only going to do about four stitches just enough to tack it down so i just took about four or five stitches up four or five stitches back and that's it and that's just that's going to just hold it there you know how if you're wearing some shirts and they have this here interfacing on it and uh, you're constantly having to push it back down and push it back down and push it back down well this is going to keep you from having to do that just these i mean you saw it took all of two seconds put in a couple little stitches right there and that will save all the aggravation of constantly having to push it back down and push it back down so that's why we did that and this here we're just going up about four inches and I'm going to use my little my little measuring tool there remember I told you to get one of these these are really really nice handy I have to laugh because on my last show I said okay a lot <laughs> so I'm trying to watch myself tonight y'all but if I do it might just be my trademark is okay now we're gonna do this <laughs> but I swear I'm trying to watch it so <laughs> but I'll end up saying something else and saying it a lot <laughs> but that's what sewing is sewing is fun you should have fun and you should be happy while you're sewing so and i am so that's that's all that matters okay so <laughs> there's my okay for tonight just cutting off these threads I hate threads that's like my biggest pet peeve <laughs> so there's our armhole on the inside there's our armhole on the outside now see how pretty that looks all nice and finished 
you know, just, just looks much nicer. Now what we're going to do, and this is another just straight line sewing, is this is the top of our garment, that what's going around your neck here. And you need a pocket for your ribbon to go in. Now remember I said we're going to add three inches. This is what our three inches is for. We're going to do a three inch fold here. Get your little handy little measurer here and fold up three inches. And we're going to put a pin. And then we're going to come down here and we're going to fold up three inches. We're going to put another pin. Give it a nice tug just to kind of flatten it all back out. And then we're going to press it because it's so much easier to sew when everything is nice and flat and pressed. Now for that pocket, you only actually need about a two inch pocket. So what we're going to do is we fold it three. This is where you're going to hide this here raw edge is inside the pocket. So you're going to fold an inch inside. And just using your little, your little uh, measuring tape here, fold it over until you hit two inch. And you're going to pin it. Same thing on this here end. And you're going to pin it. And just fold that up under until you hit your two inch in the center. And you're going to pin it. Lay it out nice and flat. And press. Now keep in mind, if you're doing this out of like a knit or a jersey, something like that, uh, make sure that you put a pressing cloth in between your iron and your fabric. This way you're not leaving that shiny marks and stuff on the fabric. Now here's our back side or front, either one. Just both of these are the same, front and back, so it doesn't really matter which side's the front and which side's the back. So we're going to do the same thing again, as we're going to measure our three inches. And now all we're going to do is just sew straight across here, and we're going to stay right up next to the edge of where our fold is. And that gives us that nice two inch pocket. <coughs> <clears throat> so, just start and sew in, take a couple steps, go backwards, always lock in those stitches. Okay. We're just going to stay up next to the edge. Now try your best not to run over your needles. I know some people do. I don't like to. I'm actually, see how this here is a little bit out? I'm actually going to take that just because I'm so picky and I don't want to see that kind of stuff. <laughs> I'm just going to fold it on in there so that you don't see it from the outside and let this stitch catch it as I'm going across there. See, that's why I say nobody's perfect. Everybody can do these. 
one little teeny teeny thing is not going to be the end of the world. But you can see so far, we're almost done with this. You can see how easy it has been to do. Okay, that's your top. That's all done now. Now we're going to put our hem, and we do the hem the exact same way that we did on those bags. We're just going to fold up an inch, and we're going to press it, and then we're going to fold up another inch, just like we did with the bags. Remember the top of the bags? We did an inch and pressed it down and then use that as the guide to press it back over. That's the exact same thing that we're going to do here. See, that's a handy little trick I taught y'all last time. Oop, there it is. Okay, now remember where we said that this bottom, where it came about uneven a little bit when we sewed down the side? Okay, this is about middle of the back, and this here's that other side, and there's our one inch there, and here's our one inch here. And what we're going to do is we're just going to pull this, just give it a nice taunt pull, and that will straighten all that out, and see, and nobody will ever even see that, because that's going to be on the inside. So even though this first fold here, right in here, is not going to be an inch, that's really not going to be an issue because you're not going to see it. See, and that's how we cover a little bit of mistakes that we might do, but everything that you sew, you're going to have a little bit of, it's going to be off just a little bit like that. You know, just in the way the fabric pulls or the way that you pull the fabric you're always going to have something's not going to come out exact shoot it could have just been cut just a little bit off and that'll make that much of a difference when you go down to the end but like i said it's going to be on the inside and nobody's going to see it so i wouldn't worry about it and i'm not worried about it <laughs> So, now we're going to use what we've already folded over our inch. And that's going to, we're just going to use that as our guide on doing this. That's what makes that so easy. So, we're just going to take out our pins. Fold this over. See, there's a pin. And then we'll press this down again. I've got everything pinned. And I'm using my glass pin so I'm not melting anything. I'm just pressing it up real good so that when I go to sew across that, it just smooth as silk sewing it. Don't have to fight with it or anything. Okay. Now I like to start and stop anytime I'm doing a hem. I like to start and stop on a seam because usually the seam is either on the side of your pants or the inside seam of the pant or side of the shirt, something like that. And this way, 
when you start and stop, you're always going to have where you run over the stitch. You know, you want to line it up as best as you can. Sometimes you can't, like on this here, I probably won't even be able to see the white thread running through here. So this way, if you're starting and stopping, like at the back of a garment or on a seam, nobody's going to notice whether or not you're in the exact same spot. Yeah, it's just a good way to hide your start and stop. And see, this is where I started from. So if you're really careful, you can kind of see those first few stitches. And then you can just stitch right over top of those first few stitches. And then just back up. You always want to back it up. But see, when you're using a color that's really close to, to what the garment is, you don't really see the thread. You know, in this case, we can't really change it to green there and pink there and orange there. <laughs> so we're just using white. And it's just a little summer, summer little dress, so the white is fine. Okay, all of our sewing is done on this dress. Only thing we got left to do now on it is put our ribbon. And that's just putting the ribbon on the neck and on the, and that's it, just the neck. Okay, so we've got all the sewing done on our little summer dress, our little pillowcase dress. Um, only thing I'm doing now is just doing a little bit of pressing on it because you don't want a bunch of wrinkles and stuff. So the next step, if you notice up here, this is that two, big two inch pocket that we did. And now we're gonna put our ribbon through our pocket. And you can get this ribbon and stuff just right out at Walmart or any sewing shop that you want to go to. You know, uh, they carry it over in Tazewell and they carry it over at Harrogate at Cosby's. And just pick a color that matches your fabric, you know, or stands out or something. In this case, we're going to use the green because the green... It's just kind of really summery and it's on the, the little flowers and everything. It's really bright, pretty color. And now I got this little handy tool here and I love this little tool. You put whatever, it's for elastic and stuff like that going in like uh, skirt pocket or waistbands of skirts and stuff like that. And I use it for the ribbon too. Uh, it's kind of like it's spring loaded it's got little teeth here okay it digs in to the the ribbon or the elastic or whatever you're using and then you take this little part here and push it all the way down on it and it tightens it and it holds that well that gives you all this here to use to guide that ribbon through your pocket now you can use a safety pin for this too if you want to I've done that um, I've used all kinds of stuff doing it, but you're just pulling that ribbon, you know, going through that little pocket. Now, this is why, remember I said that you're going to do a stitch about three to four inches? This is why you did that stitch, is because you've got your, your inside facing here is inside of this little pocket, too. Well, when you're trying to run your ribbon through the little pocket, if you're not careful, your little thing will go up under this here interface and then it's aggravating trying to get it out. So if you just sew that down just a little bit, it makes it so much easier to pull your ribbon through. Now this is personal preference here. You can do it like I've done this one here with just one, one bow on one side. I've seen them with bows on both sides. Um, I like just the one because it just seems more secure because this is the only thing that's holding the dress up 
and you kind of don't want it to fall apart you know or fall off while you're wearing it so i like just kind of feeling a little bit more secure and keeping just one ribbon this way at least i know one side's definitely going to stay up and you're just going to run your ribbon through there you're going to leave just enough out like here to be on your shoulder part here and then you're going to have enough left over on this side to tie your bow and keep in mind you're going to be gathering all this here up so you you don't want to leave a big old bunch you know if you want to you can just go ahead and uh, throw a pin or something on this here end to kind of hold it still and then gather what you think you're going to gather and that'll give you the size of what your ribbon's going to be when you leave your ribbon on there and that looks about right right there there's no rhyme or reason to it you just do kind of however much you want to leave on there and then we're just going to tie a bow on this side And it's just like your shoestring, you know, just a regular old bow. And there's your little pillowcase dress. See how easy that is? One more little thing that you can do. This is something that I do. And I notice a lot of people don't, but I like to do it because if this here comes untied, it'll fall down and you'll lose it. Well, I like to put these little loops in there. And this is really simple to do. All it is, is just your cotton, uh, what you use on crocheting and stuff. It's just a small yarn. And I just use a color that's kind of inconspicuous that you're not gonna see a whole lot of. Okay, now this is another reason for having your your little seam pressed on the side is this way you know exactly where the side is and that's where you want to put this is right on the side if you want to put this on your child first just to find out exactly where you're going to where you want it, uh, the tie to be if you wanted to tie it make it like an ampere waist up here you can put it down here the way I had it on the mannequin. Any place you really want to put it. You know, I know a lot of the, um, a lot of these that are made for older, you know, teenagers, stuff like that. They put it up here because that's kind of what the style is right now, is having it up at the umpire waist. You know, but the little girls, like this in here, the little teeny girls, those are just right around the waistband. So you can put it pretty much anywhere you want to put it. You could even put it down on the hip if you want to. I've seen it done that way too. Um, but just have the, have the child put on the little dress. This way you know where you're going to put these. And let's just, we'll just make this the same way we did this one. And uh, I don't have my measuring tape. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do it this way. So I can see I'm going to put it right there. That's where this child is. <laughs> See, there's all kinds of ways to cheat. Okay, so I'm gonna take my yarn here and I'm gonna go in through the back, right at that spot where I had it. Okay. And then I'm gonna just come out and then just go right back in. Okay, and you're just it's not a big distance apart it's just a little bit only thing this is is just holding the little belt in place okay then go on the inside here okay so don't pull it all the way through because you want to tie a knot right here. So what you're going to do is you're just going to tie a knot and you're going to leave from your knot to the to the side of the 
the garment itself, you want to leave that big enough for the ribbon to go through. Okay, so it's just a just a little knot there. Cut off your excess, and you're going to do that to the other side too. We'll just do it all on the inside. And this this side you can just do right on that seam because that's already your your mark is your seam. You already know that that's your side. We're just going to do the exact same thing. We're just using the, the yarn. I mean, you can use just regular yarn for it, too, if you want to. It's just something that's going to hold your little belt in place. And just cut off that excess. Now, we've got our little dress. You just watched me make this. You saw how easy it was to make. Everybody can make one of these for themselves, for their kids, for your neighbors. Everybody can make one of these little dresses. Um, just one little three yard roll of ribbon. Cut the, cut the bottoms at a little angle. That gives it a little professional look to it. Same thing with the, the ribbon here. And out of that one roll that you paid like two bucks for at Walmart, you even got enough that you could do a little headband. Yeah, so she'll have a little matching ribbon in her hair. So there you go. That's how you do a pillowcase dress. There's a lot of variations to this dress. This is the simplest way. You can make them and put in little pockets if you wanted to kind of get really, you know, advanced with it and try other, other different things. But you can put pockets down that side seam that you made. Just throw a pocket there if you wanted to. You can also take ribbon and put it across the bottom. So when you did your hem, you could have put a little piece of ribbon right across the bottom to kind of tie all the ribbon together if you wanted to. There's all different little variations that you can do to this dress, but this is very simple. It's very cute. It's very airy and light, great for summertime. And when you make yours, you come by the shop and you show me. I actually want to thank Mary for showing me her bag that she made last week. She came by the shop, did the cutest pink bag. And I was so proud of her and I'm so tickled. I love it when people show me what, they're, what they make. So when you make your dress, bring it by the shop and let me see. And I'll see you next time. And that's how you make a pillowcase dress so perfect. Sewing Perfect with Debbie is filmed at So Perfect Studios, downtown Middlesboro. Join us each Thursday at 8 p.m. exclusively on Hometown TV 13. Follow your Facebook friends and be a fan of Hometown TV. Facebook.com slash Hometown TV 13. Voted number one community TV channel in Bell County. We're Hometown TV. Middlesboro, Pineville, Bell County.